Death Star is a 2007 novel based around, well, obviously, the Death Star, um, released in 2007, like I said. It focuses on something that really, when you think about it, should be focused on and really kind of gives a clear new light to the Empire, the human element side of the Empire. Like, in episode 4 through 6, we just see evil and bad guys and whatnot. Like Tarkin, who's a complete jackass. Darth Vader, who's a manipulative, who's suffering and whatnot. Well, well, you get hinted that in episode 6, regarding how he says he must obey the Emperor, even though he kind of could defy him on multiple occasions. And then you have the Emperor, who is a psych raving psychotic, and a cartoon character, among other things. But this novel also, but this novel also focuses on several subplots and ties in with Episode Four at times. But it mostly focuses on these crew, low-level personnel who are in opposition against the Death Star, and when it destroys two planets, Alderaan and some other planet that I don't recall pronouncing right, they plot an escape to. They plot to escape, and, there, and there's a colorful cast of characters, and we discover one of them is later to be revealed to be Force-sensitive, where he has visions of the future of the Death Star's destruction. So, really, it doesn't really focus much on Jedis and Sith, even though you have Darth Vader appearing in it, but mostly it focuses on these bunch of people, one having the ability to use the Force, but is not really trained in it since he just now discovered it at the time of his death. Um, since, yeah, Nova Smith, S Smith, S S I can't pronounce his last name, Nova, gets killed off when the Death Star is destroyed. We also learn, I, I'm pretty certain it's been explained in past other stories, that Tarkin has a love interest. And she would later appear in Fate of the Jedi series. So there's that. But I mostly am fascinated how this how this shows that the Empire has a human element to it, with these personnel bonding despite the Death Star's creation, knowing that they're creating a monstrosity of destruction, believing what they're doing is right, and then when Death and when the Death Star destroys the two planets, they realize how destructive this is, and now they want to escape. And it also kind of gives that feeling that Luke may have committed murder on a bunch of innocents. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of Empire officials that were evil in that Death Star of Destruction. But at the same time, you also also think that there were students, slavers, a whole bunch of other people. There was even a bar scene in the novel on the Death Star, and I'm wondering... <laughs> okay, that just sounds out of place when I think about it. But... It realized that Luke committed murder on a bunch of innocent people, either A, being forced to build this monstrosity and maintenance it, or B, people who believe what they're doing is right because they feel like it's good for the galaxy, but not in the whole, I'm evil, I cannot wait to destroy my path. But instead, people who just think they're doing what they think is right. And I really hope that this book ties in with Rogue One, since, you know, it's going to take place regarding stealing the Death Star plan, since it's been said that this is a war film and it's going to be Shade of Grey, though the reshoots might be a completely different story, since it's been reported that it's not being, not being created by the director, so you probably might expect something a little bit different. But that's beside the point, I'll talk about that when the next Rogue One trailer drops. But I really did find this novel fascinating because it just focuses on the shade of gray element that Star Wars usually has. Well, at least the old expanded universe when it was under George Lucas' supervision, not the Disney canon, which focuses so much on evil and good and righteousness. There's no shade of gray there anymore. Fuck you. Fuck you, Disney. Like, generally, fuck you. Because... You're destroying what was a great product. Why? <sighs> and we kind of get elements of the Death Star in future in the Star Wars Episode Seven movie when you hear um, one of the stormtroopers refer Finn as a traitor because they believe what they're doing is right and Finn's in the wrong in their eyes. And then Kylo Ren calls Finn a traitor because he believes what he's doing is right for the galaxy. 
even though you clearly know it's wrong. But it's all subjective on that. But like, I but this novel was really fascinating. I really did like it. I couldn't. I really wanted to see how all this works out for them. Like two characters don't make it, and then you hear, and then like it focuses on other subplots like Tarkin, Darth Vader, the Episode Four scenes. But ultimately, it focuses on these on these cast of characters who have who are just working for the Empire by force or by belief. And then when they realize how destructive the Empire has become, they realize, okay, we gotta get out of here. And they do. A lot of them do get out of here, but some don't. Well, at least the cast. But when you think about it, it taints Luke's victory over the Death Star because even... Like, even though he destroyed a monstrosity, you woefully committed murder on a bunch of people who were forced to build the Death Star and, re and maintain maintenance on it, like I've said. And to, those, and to students who were children who were on board the Death Star learning stuff, like it was also being used for Imperial training. So, yeah, it kind of gives an element of Episode 4 and makes you think, yeah... I wonder, uh, they should have done the scene when Luke has nightmares about knowing he might have killed a bunch of innocents on board that ship who probably had no choice. <sighs> oh well. Well, everyone, this was Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more.